Hello, you beautiful beings. It's Elaine, and this is episode number 47 of the Unleash Your Life podcast. So glad you dropped by. Today's topic is all about how you're currently recreating your childhood and how you can stop, if you want to, that is. This topic came out of a conversation I had with someone who just couldn't see where and why they were creating all the self-induced drama and dissatisfaction from their childhood in their current life. That's because most of us have never been shown where to look for the clues. This show will help with that. As always, stick around even if you feel this isn't for you. Chances are it'll be for someone you know and love, and it may just help you to have a stimulating and meaningful conversation with them. Give me a sec, and I will run the intro, and I will be right back. See you soon. This is the Unleash Your Life podcast, where you're going to learn to rewild yourself. I'm your host, Lane Smith-Brown, and I'm a best-selling author and rewilding guide. And over the last 20 years, I've been guiding women back to their truest selves. You see, you were born wild with all the wisdom you will ever need to navigate your life in a beautiful and powerful way. Then, just like everyone else on the planet, you got tamed as you fell under the power and influence of others who were also tamed. All that taming you got as a kid has you convinced you are less powerful than you really are. I call all of that unconscious programming power leaks. And on this show, you're going to discover yours and then you're going to choose to plug them so you can get back to the wild, wise and powerful being that you are. So grab a coffee, glass of wine, or a favorite friend, or all three, and let's talk about what living your wild self can mean for you. All right, thanks for coming back. And as always, thanks for showing up. I love that you're here. If you're supporting this show by subscribing, I love you just a little bit more. So if you want to feel just a little bit more love from Lane, go click subscribe. Oh, and I'm just in the process of loading all the episodes on my YouTube channel. So if you're, uh, if that's a favorite place for you to hang out, you can now find me there too. At the time of this recording, about half of them are loaded up, but we're working on that. If it's not clear to you already, I love what I do. I love finding new ways of saying something or clarifying something that moves somebody a little bit farther along on their journey to discover what is playing in the background of their life so they can free themselves from the trap of unconscious behavior. I trust that you are finding little nuggets here and there as you listen to these podcasts that help illuminate a behavior that you've grown accustomed to in your life and then gained a perspective or a new tool to get some freedom from that. We're always learning from each other. Sometimes, actually more often than not, it's so much easier to see someone else's shit and and confusion than it is to see our own. Here's the thing. It doesn't help you to have heard about these skills on a superficial or cognitive level. In order to change outcomes in our life, this knowledge has to be experienced on a visceral level, in a in your bones kind of way. It has to be an aha moment. Emotional awareness, the first step to awakening, is not an intellectual exercise. It is an intuitive exercise. And for those of, of us or you who are, are used to living in your mind, it can be a bit taxing. That's okay. That's why I'm approaching this topic in all kinds of different ways. Everyone can get this at the moment they are meant to get it. I encounter a lot of individuals who will quickly chime in, oh, I know that. But they don't know it. They heard it. They may have gone so far as to have the skills to see that unhelpful behavior in others, but not for themselves. It just bounces right off of them. I bumped into someone uh, some months back now, and we got into a conversation about this whole idea that we experience some rough stuff in our childhood, and because of it, 
we instinctively develop coping mechanisms that help us navigate our adult life. What was good in our kidhood seems to be good in our grown-up life. She was well aware of how this happens, but she just couldn't see how she was doing it to herself. In fact, she was quite adamant that she was the exception to this rule. It wasn't my job to change her mind. It was simply a conversation. But I doubt that there would be anyone who would spend time with her who would not see those coping patterns blatantly played out in her life. But for her, I detected that admitting a perceived failure was an impossible step to take because that's something she wasn't allowed to do when she was a child. Perfection was the goal. I listened to her frustration and threw out a few questions here and there to challenge the idea that she didn't have any unhelpful patterns carried forward from her kidhood, but it just floated on past. A person is ready when they're ready. There's no point in trying to rush someone through an epiphany. And so I didn't. Here's the thing. None of us were parented the way we needed to be parented. Whether you were raised by your biological or adoptive mother or father or both, whether you were raised by extended family, friends, or the system, or even if you were completely alone, you picked up messages about yourself that were unadulterated lies. You may have picked up that your opinion didn't matter or that food was scarce or the only way to be safe was to go to your room. Maybe you didn't have any autonomy on what happened to you in your day. No choices for you. You may have felt unsafe, or the environment may have been disruptive and loud. Perhaps you were left alone way too often and for way too long. Someone may have ridiculed you, teased you, embarrassed you, or shamed you relentlessly in their particularly mean-spirited sense of humor. Maybe you got isolated because there was something about you that was different. Maybe you were more sensitive than your siblings, so you were marked as weaker than the pack. My sister was relentlessly uh, diminished because she was an artist. She was creative. It was deemed flighty and silly, kind of useless. She spent her childhood hiding her gifts and abilities from the people who should have left her feeling wonderfully powerful about her gifts and abilities and her unique way of observing the world. I learned I was in the way and exhausting to my mother, born 13 years after her first three, without her intention, I was the last thing she needed in an already stressful life. I spent my childhood trying to either make myself useful or make myself invisible, hiding myself away so I didn't cause any more Uh, inconvenience to anyone. I have friends who were not allowed to express an unhappy or angry emotion and it left them completely unable to even feel things as they got older. Just numb, head down, trying to get through their days. Often uh, others were yelled at and so they either went quiet or now yell at anyone they perceive as weaker than themselves. If we were bullied, we often become the bully or we gravitate to people who will continue to bully us. That's the irony of what we pick up in our kidhood. We either learn to repeat the learned behavior on ourselves, or we aim it at others. There were aspects of my childhood that made me feel I was not in control, so I learned to control my environment as I grew up. I developed ways of making people do what I needed them to do so that I got my way. Sometimes I manipulated or cajoled. Sometimes I withheld favor. Sometimes I lost my temper or used silence until they corrected their unacceptable behavior. My father never raised his voice in our house, but he used silence as a lethal weapon and ruled the house with it. I learned from a master, all unconsciously. This is a super common thing, this need for control, and it's deeply ingrained as a helpful tendency. After all, we make the world a better place when we organize the shit out of everything, don't we? For those of you who don't know me well, 
know that the last remark was meant as a joke. When we organize the shit out of everything in our lives, we leave no room for the miracles, and we live ridiculously small lives. There is something about being willing to see how something could happen that can be full of fun if you choose to see it that way. That tendency to need to create order out of the chaos that was our childhood can create an adult who has no idea how to live a life in freedom. They just continue to control themselves by not allowing anything around them to change. They lock into a habit like their life depends on it. This individual can't even allow themselves to recognize how they feel. Just get caught up in blaming everything around or everyone around them for their lack of comfort because those people are not conforming to their way of doing things. Most of the world falls into either being controlling or being people pleasers. It's funny when a controller thinks they're a people pleaser and a people pleaser thinks they're in charge. It's another trick of our subconscious mind. A people pleaser gets their power, and I've got power in little quotation marks, they get their power by thinking they are serving the world and making everyone else happy. They create a sense of belonging for themselves. How would anyone survive without me playing this role or doing this stuff? These individuals are feeding into the belief that the whole world would fall apart if they chose something different for themselves. People would fall apart, communities or organizations would fall apart, their kids would fall apart, their mate would fall apart. The list is endless. They just keep themselves in a tiny little box and call it service. A controller thinks they're serving the world and making everyone happy by getting them to do their life in the right way, their way. They seem to wonder how would anyone survive without them playing this important role in their lives. The irony here is that they think this is giving them more choice than they had as a kid. But creating all kinds of rules is simply keeping them trapped in a tiny little box because they're not allowing themselves the chance to change and evolve. They can't even break their own rules. Does any of this sound familiar? Here's a truth. We came into the world as freedom seekers. We were full of wonder. We came to explore. <laughs> then we woke up to the chaos of our formative years. We did what we needed to do to survive, to feel safe, to feel accepted by this group of strangers. So from my perspective, the only freedom there is for any of us is in seeing how our childhood experience is playing out in our adult lives and there are clues, big clues. Try this idea on for size. If all of us simply understood and accepted that we are each individually keeping ourselves in the energy we learned from our kidhood, it would serve us well. The fact is we unconsciously will choose mates, jobs, friends and situations that will help keep us in aspects of our kidhood feelings. It's a hard pill to swallow, but it doesn't make it any less true. Let me drill down on that a bit, okay? This will be helpful to know. You use what you learned about yourself in kidhood on yourself or on others, always even if you can't admit it to yourself. It's just the way we develop. Let me explain. Let's say you grew up feeling one of these feelings often enough that you can still feel it, okay? It's really easy to conjure up this emotion. Maybe you felt unloved, unworthy, unsafe, unvalued, undervalued, unimportant, invisible, not enough irrelevant, out of control, insig insignificant, powerless, and so on. If you felt any of those, uh, or uh, maybe something else comes to mind and I didn't mention it, you will continue to unconsciously create situations 
where that emotion or feeling is experienced. And you will come to the conclusion that you you deserve it uh, when it's pointed at yourself or you're going to blame others for doing it to you. What's the solution? You will need to choose to consciously change your expectation and behavior. And that's what I coach my clients to do. This is happening to every human being on the planet that has not fully embraced this task of self-discovery. What can easily follow self-discovery, self-awareness, or emotional awareness is self-empowerment. And that's the goal here. Self-empowerment is the best kind of power because it's collaborative and helpful and encourages others to stand in their self-empowerment as well. Imagine for a second, all of us emotionally healthy and strong. I believe that means our, uh, a world of people who are emotionally healthy and strong, which means the good life can be created and shared instead of hoarded and stolen. That's the work in a nutshell. But our ego is clever and makes it hard to notice. We become convinced that it's just the way our life is. <laughs> That's not the way our life needs to be. It's the way we've learned to make our life. Because we learned this was normal in our kidhood. This is a fact. Until we recognize where we are currently parenting ourselves as we were parented, I'm going to say that again, until we recognize where we are currently parenting ourselves as we were parented, we would more easily see where we are living less than we were meant to live. When we accept that we are doing that, then we can choose to reparent ourselves the way we deserved to be parented in the first place. Think of it this way. If you weren't listened to as a child, you may grow up to hold yourself back and not speak up or speak up in such a way that others find you annoying so they don't listen to you or you won't listen to yourself so you will not rest when you're tired, not eat or overeat when you're hungry, override your need for self-care in favor of meeting others' needs. Perhaps your friends and mate dismiss you and don't listen to you. That would reaffirm that feeling. Some people can even exhibit issues where their voice or throat become an issue and, and give them trouble as an unconscious need to be quiet. That's by no means a comprehensive list, but if you weren't listened to as a child, look for clues in how that may manifest in your life today. Here's another example. If you felt you weren't important or felt that you were not enough as a child, you may grow up to Tell everyone how important you are, what you've accomplished, how much money you have, how big your house is, etc. Or the exact opposite, where you find yourself in that feeling space of your childhood where you want things, but they never come. You seek to be important, but constantly feel like a failure. Or you diminish your accomplishments and don't take credit where credit is due where you don't even try to accomplish anything so you can conjure up that childhood feeling once again. You may go for every degree or accreditation you can so that people will notice your importance, or you'll go the other direction and tell yourself you're too stupid or undeserving to go for those types of goals. Perhaps your friends and mate bring it out in you, feelings that you are not important to them. They don't meet your needs as you would want them met. They cancel plans, never call you back, or are never truly present when they're with you. That too is not a comprehensive list, but if you felt unimportant as a child, look for clues in how that manifests in your life today. And here's another quick trick your ego plays. It's not necessarily that they 
are doing those things to you. Sometimes you simply interpret their behavior as that so you can feel the feeling. Again, you're not consciously doing any of this. You are unconsciously doing this. That's just two examples. But can you see how this works? We will either replicate the feeling or we will try to go in the opposite direction to eliminate the feeling. But in a cruel twist of irony, you end up replicating the feeling anyway in both scenarios. Can you see how important it is to your well-being to wake up to what you are unconsciously doing to yourself. This is happening to everyone on the planet. Yet we feel so alone in this experience. Learning to pinpoint some of the key feelings you experienced in your childhood and recognizing when and where those familiar feelings come up in your adult life is a big clue. Here's an exercise for you if you want to explore. Just two questions. Number one, what did you feel as a young kid? I'm looking for something incessant and ongoing, like you weren't allowed to express certain emotions, say anger or disappointment. Maybe there was scarcity of food or attention. Perhaps disappointment was constant because someone didn't ever keep their word or nothing ever turned out as planned. Can you see what I'm getting at here? When you think about your kidhood, what's the dominant feeling? Were you shut out of the group, picked on? Maybe you were teased by something you had no control over, like your appearance or the way you spoke or expressed yourself? Now, number two, after you get that information and you've narrowed it down, Can you see where and when those feelings come up in your current life experience? If you're like the woman I was speaking about earlier, and you can't even put a name to any of this, you can't see the patterns, you think you're an exception to the rule, then ask your higher self to show you. And that can be as simple as becoming quiet and saying something like, Show me where I am holding myself to old patterns. And then wait, and it'll show up. There is so much power in recognizing our patterns. When we make the unconscious conscious, we open ourselves to a better life on every single level. It gets a little messy at the beginning, but it evens out and opens up all kinds of uh, awesomeness in our lives. The choice is always yours. You either turn on the light and see what's lurking in the dark, or you just shut the door and carry on as is. Totally up to you. If you want some clarification on this episode, Perhaps someone, uh, perhaps I lost you in the weeds somewhere and, and you just need a little bit of help to get clear, drop me a note at lane at hum, huminc.com. Those links are in the show notes or on my website, which is also a link in the show notes. And if you don't know how to find that, open the Unleash Your Life podcast. Touch the episode with your finger and it will open up to show you what the, what the episode is about. And underneath that, you'll see the links to my info. It works on all podcast apps, Google, Spotify, Apple, etc. So if you want more help, you can get it. Now, some of you who've been listening for a while might be aware that I've switched things up a little bit. I'm now at lanesmithbrown.com and focusing clearly or solely on coaching, both private and group. I just got super clear one day that I want to work with those who truly want to bring awareness into their lives. And to me, that means having accountability, something that can't be achieved through courses. Interesting fact, did you know that only two percent of people who sign up for a course actually complete the course and even less apply the course, then most of us walk around and say, oh, that didn't work for me. It's funny how we often fail ourselves. 
It's a billion dollar industry that isn't really moving the needle for many people trying to awaken to their power. That's not to say the teachers in the courses aren't amazing. Many are, and I've taken the courses to prove it. But some of this stuff is just not meant to be done alone. And if I'm speaking to you, you now know how to find me. Okay, that was a big show. Kind of ended it abruptly with the announcements. I apologize if that sounded a little stilted, but I want to meet you back here next time. I appreciate that you show up. And if this helped you in any way, please spread the word. More people doing this work make the world a better place. As always, stay weird, stay curious, and learn to recognize where you are recreating the feelings of your kidhood. Trust me, when I say it will be well worth the effort to see it, uh, I'm telling you the truth. And when you get to see it, you get to let it go. And life gets better when you start living in your true power. Ta for now. Well, I hope this show rocked your world a little bit. If you want additional resources, check out the links in the show notes or at lanesmithbrown.com. Before you go, please subscribe to this podcast. It's how we get these tools into the world. And this world needs more wild women standing in their authentic power. Do that for me, will ya? Thank you.